everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Sometimes it's about the little things. And today we're going to be playing with paper clips. And so I invite you to go get your readers on. Because <laughs> you might need them because uh, we're working with the tiny things today. So I uh, was just looking at um, an idea on Pinterest and I thought, I'm free. Some new ideas too. All right. Get my little. Where's my. Is that you, little thingy? Okay, I always like to have a couple of uh, jewelry pliers around in case I'm working with jump rings and I have to open and close them, but we'll see if we use those. Okay, now I have stickled one of these with stickles, and this is in the color rose gold. There you go. And I put it on this guy, so he looks like that. I think he's kind of cute. I think you could even probably turn these into butterflies or caterpillars or something like that too with a little ingenuity. But um, okay, so let me let me... Let me back up and how did this whole process start? So first of all, it all started with the concept of just wrapping a paper clip in some washi tape. And I thought, gee, that sounds like a great way to use up washi tape, number one. And number two, it's easy. So let's try that. All right, let's, let's grab. I'm just uh, grabbing one of these longer paper clips. Um, how long is it? Everybody wants to know. One and seven eighths, I would say. And uh, so I am going to, maybe that's a tad close, huh? I want to get you seasick. Okay. Um, I am going to grab any washi tape. And here is some washi tape. And I found um, the easiest way for me to do it was actually just to take a little piece off the roll. And I would say about that long, you know, maybe two and a half, three inches, something like that, for a big um, Q-tip, a big paper clip. And then... I like to cover this inner hoop right there. You don't have to. You could leave it um, open and use it on, as an extra place to dangle stuff from. But I'm going to cover mine just to show a basic one. Let me zoom in so you can see. Okay, so we have that. And I'm just going to wrap it around. And now I'm just going to angle the pull um, a little bit so we travel down the paper clip. Down. And, and sometimes washi stretches a little. You know how washi... Um, Masking tape stretches a little. Some of it does. Some of it doesn't so much. Some of it's, some of it's just like pure plastic. Um, and this one is obviously pure plastic because it's warping my... Look what it's doing to my paper clip. Okay, this is, this is called user error. <laughs> that would be me. Okay, so um, actually what I'm going to do... Let's do it again. <laughs> I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to maybe me a little bit. And, and if you pull down a long way and that allow, uh, creates a little area here that is not flush when you wrap it the next time around that's going to close that that's going to pull that taut so everything's going to be good so you don't have to worry about that okay so now we have this little end i highly recommend doing this stick i use scott and i just put a little there because why washi tape is low tech tape and it'll probably pop off and as i was making these and i didn't do it because i was lazy pants because i was just making them um, they started to pop off yeah so now putting a little a good strong glue there it could be wet white glue it could be art glitter glue elmer's glue but just something to give it a little extra um, strength okay so there we have one done so quick and easy right i mean no big deal at all okay so made just some different see here's one where i didn't didn't glue it properly so let me get back in there because i was lazy that's what you get for being lazy pants okay back over there and re-glue and that now it will hold okay so we have two and here's another okay so let's make um the same concept but this time we're going to do a smaller paper clip this is like the little babies not 
how, how long ago. An eighth, maybe inch, kind of in that zone. Okay, so let's put, let's put you over there for a second before I stick my fingers in you. All right, actually, let me put these guys of question that we are copying right now on the table in front of us. These are the ones that, let me make it. These little guys are what we making, are what we making. We, may, we be making these today. <laughs> All right, so let's grab some washi. Here's some pretty purple washi. So we have about three inches, yeah, maybe three, four inches, plenty. Because um, once it's wrapped, it's wrapped. You don't really need more than that to cover the, uh, the paper clip. So here we go. Let me zoom in again so you can see. It's fascinating, isn't it? You know, it's very fun and rewarding, though. That's what it is. It's fun and rewarding. And I would love to hear your ideas of how we can use these because I think this just opens up worlds of possibilities. I mean, maybe journal closures and... Um, Maybe, I don't know. I mean, just, just little tassel-y things are coming to mind. I mean, you could put a bunch of these together, make a little tassel. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be so much fun. Okay, so I gave it a slight pull to pull it down, and then I kind of lessen the pull so it, it ends up flush. Very easy to do. A little glab, a little glab of do will do ya. <laughs> a little glob of glue will do ya. And there we go. Very easy, right? So easily crank out a bunch of these one after another. So then my little ferret mind went down another little rabbit hole and I thought, well, gee, if we can use washi tape, why can't we use um, a regular paper, a book page? So I had some book page. Uh, where is it now? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm reaching into the giant bin. Hang on. All right, I'm back. I'm, I grabbed a book page. You can grab any book page. It just doesn't have to be super fancy or anything. Um, but uh, um, maybe what you want to do is tear it into some strips or cut some strips, doesn't matter. And you don't need much, so, and it's all good. There we go. So, now this will not stretch, okay? So if you want to do a bigger paper clip, make your, your uh, tears a little bit wider, okay? So maybe I'll tear you about here. We'll do a big one and we'll do a little one with this guy. And one will have text on it and one will not. Now, if you want the text to show on the outside, you want to end it at the text. So make sure that one end ends with text on it because that's what's gonna show. All right, and probably this one's even too long. You don't really, these don't need to be that long, Pam. They don't, they really need to be like pretty short. Okay, so how long is that? Okay. You and a quarter, yeah, easy. Um, no problem for this size paper clip. This is the bigger one. All right, so now we can start wrapping. You could glue this first part if you want, and, and if you want to, if you want to be like really super secure, Sally, you can come along and do this ahead of time. Yeah, and you're getting your end very good, right? The one that's going to show. Okay. Okay, put down. Okay. There you go. Center it where you want it. Do a little, little fold over. Fold over so it looks like that. And then we just go around. And you're pretty much done. You really don't have to keep going 17 times like I am, but oh, after we're here. Okay, it's going to give it a little more oomph, weight to it. A little, a little more maybe dangle dangle to it. Um, there we go. Is that, that's really cute, isn't it? And that's got some, I believe that's German writing on it. Then you can cup it up. You can come along and crank it up a notch and ink it. Yeah, now you're talking. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm starting to see like vintage Christmas crafts or something. It's just hearkening back to a time. You know what I mean? And they made their paper clip ornaments out of little pieces of scrap paper. And they were so beautiful. You know, it's just like that. Yeah, it's like that. So I really, I love this one. This is probably like my favorite one so far. I love it. Okay, so we put you down there. And then we'll do a small one. Here's a small one. Okay, a small piece of paper. And what do we have? We have this one. Yep. He might. Maybe we we'll just take a little bit more off because he's just a little bit wide. So you can use torn edges or you can use um, cut edges. Whatever you like. Totally up to you. And like I said, you don't really need this thing that long. You kind of figure it out once you do it. And here we go. Now this beautiful caramelized iced tea colored coffee paper is already pretty, I think. So let's see. Okay, can you see, am I floating around? I'm floating, aren't I? Okay, I'm trying not to float. Okay, 
no floating pan. Okay, fold. And once you have it, you just go. Yeah, and this one, remember, you can't really pull up and down. It has to be wide enough to begin with because it's dry paper. No stretch to this stuff. Okay, so then you can ink it if you want. Pull out a different color ink. I will do that today. Okay, go ahead, Pam. Get a different color ink just so you can show the world you actually can do it. Okay, here comes broken china. All right. Maybe I'll even go over it with broken china right now. You can do that because it's yours. Yeah. All right. Broken china. So you can co-mingle the colors. Why not? Hey. Okay. So now we have this little guy. How cute is he, right? Very cute. And, and if you're like still thinking you want to do things, I don't know if this is going to work, but we can try it because we stuck our foot in our like We're going to try it. Maybe you can put a rubber stamp on it. Let's see. I don't know if it's going to catch it or not. We're going to find out. Let me grab the, the black. Right, there's brown, there's black. Okay, the other ways. Okay, here we go, right? Black sit. They're always at the top. Okay. Some leafies. I have no idea if this is going to work. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, kind of. We sort of lost the center, but we got a little imprint. That's kind of cute, right? How cute is that? That is so cute. I know, I, I, I know, I know. I'm beside myself in cuteness, not me personally, but that is just adorable. Look how cute those are. And it, like nothing, we're talking a paper clip and a, the world's tiniest piece of paper. Um, what else can you do? Okay, so then I came along and I made these little guys. These were probably the easiest and most basic and I think highly adorable um, ones. And I just used plain white copy paper because I do a lot of trimming around here. So I just had a little tiny piece like that big, very, very small and um, grabbed paper clip of choice. And I think I used a small, I used a copper one this time. This is an old vintage copper one that might look pretty. And grab the glue stick. Here we go. The glue stick and putting it on here. Let me move you guys. You guys are like looking in the background all busy like. Okay, just put it on. No fanfare here. Anybody can do this, super easy. Super fun. I don't know. It's got a Christmas. It does. It's got a Christmas vibe to it. I can't explain it. It just feels Christmassy. It does. Okay, there we go. All right. So have enough glue. Do I have enough glue? Maybe not. Get in there with the glue pan. Don't be shy. You've got plenty. Yeah. There's things you can chintz on, not the glue. That's right. Or else you'll go bonkers. Mm hmm. Okay. Eh? Okay. No, you don't have to buy expensive glue. I'm just teasing. Um, okay. I'm inking. And I'm inking. I'm back to the brown one again. See how that happens? It does. But I'm going for that rustic um, appeal look, you know, very old fashioned sort of look. And now I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? I am going to, oh, let me, I didn't ink this side well enough. I want more ink. <laughs> I want more ink. Okay, there we go. And I grabbed a little pen. This is a Sharpie pen. Basically, you want something with a, this is a fine point, uh, something with a, Find point. This is like a tiny little marker. And they can just come in here and write something wonderful like, um, uh, okay, here's my great calligraphy. Yeah, happy. There we go. So if you have a little pen, you could, you could do this with pen or pencil or colored pencil or a little thin marker like this. Um, and all of a sudden you have word art, which is kind of fun. Um, you could dangle these from earrings or from a necklace or um, all sorts of things. I mean, from a uh, fan pole, if you have one of those, it would be so cool. Okay, so let's put all these little guys here. These are very fun. So now the next question, it, we're going to decorate these further, but I wanted to maybe show you wrapping one more thing, which is, uh, what if we use material, some fabric and uh, let me grab some fabric. Hold on. Okay. Here's a bag of unknowns. Yep. So I'm looking for something thin, thin would be good. Oh, I have some like little pieces of, uh, back up a little, uh, I feel like I'm all up in your stuff. <laughs> Um, this is just bedding. Uh, it's a pink colored um, uh, bed sheet and I just saved those because I, I just I love I love the pinkies. And uh, so let's get well, okay, I've got a um, uh, small paper clip. 
And let's see if this works. Now, I, I know that my Scotch Create glue stick is good for uh, light fabric projects, and I would consider this a light fabric project. I use the old thumb technique. I'm going to wrap. I think this is going to work. I think it's going to work. I have a strong feeling it's going to work. I'm not pulling too hard. You don't have to pull too hard. And the fabric you can direct. So if you want to bring it lower and finish it off at some certain point, you can do that. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of cute, right? All fuzzy and, and cute like. And uh, um, so you can definitely use fabric as well. And you can even ink the fabric if you want to give it that more vintage look. It will also receive ink very well. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, you can probably even stamp on it, I would imagine. All right, you want to see it being stamped on? I will stamp on it for you. I will take one for the team with maybe this little guy. He looks skinny like he might fit in there. He's a little tiny peg stamp. Yep, all about the tinies today. And definitely have the super readers on if you are like me and you need them. Okay, push. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, how many do I need? I don't need 17 on there. It's a little tiny thing. But let's say you want to even jazz it up more. Okay, Maybe down here. There we go. Okay. Um, the stickles, you can add stickles to these things. So let's say we want to put a little stickle here, down up, down up. And then what do we do? We set it aside to let it dry. Let me see if I can get a, hang on, uh, where is it? Tweezer. Disaster or great? Oh, look at that. It's very easy to pick up with the tweezer. I'm going to put you over here to dry, you little guy. And let's maybe put something on happy. Um, I like the, uh, the look of the sparkly stickles. Now, stickles, for some reason, takes a lot longer to dry than liquid pearls and Nouveau drops. I don't know why. It just does. Can they, can they please, like, make fast-drying stickles? Because that would really change our game. Would it? Wouldn't it, though? Wouldn't it? Okay, so here's a, well, this print is, uh, what's this? Can anybody read that? Cayman. It says Cayman. That's the color. This is very pretty. I haven't used this one in, like, ever. I don't even know if this one still works. My stickles are so old. They, they last a long time. Okay, put that there. Put that there. Down up is the maneuver that you want to do. Oop. See that? And uh, now we're going to come along with this guy. Show him to you, and then put him over here. Where's the other one? Oh, he's okay. Put you there. Okay. So let's try another one. That was kind of fun. I like that a lot. Yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> um, that was that was very rewarding, a very fulfilling feeling. Okay. Let's see. We have some purple. A little piece of purple. We have a backup pan, please. A little piece of purple here. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna snip a little tiny. Wait. I feel like I'm I'm too close now. There we go. All right, here we go. All right, it's probably too wide, but it's all right. I, don't want to I can cover 17 with this little strip. Okay, let's just, we don't need that much. Maybe Nick, remember that. The two, two and a half inch mark seems to be the good spot. Okay, and featheries are kind of nice. I think they lend to the handmade appeal of the little item that we are making. So let's get a bigger one. Let's see, are we gonna, yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, so we're gonna do a fatty. We're gonna do a fatty and, um, Okay, here we go. There we go. I'm doing my glue finger. And here's this big one. So we want a, like a wider piece of material to cover the need. And then we flip it and we wrap it. Now that's pretty easy. Anybody can do that. Look how cute that is. That's so cute, isn't it? That's very cute. Okay. We have, we have hit the, the cuterama. Okay, so now we could do a couple of things, and maybe I'll just show you a couple with this color. I don't know where the lid went for that. Oh, well. Um, now you could go with a lighter tone stickle or Nouveau drops. Let's just say I've got this one. I just grabbed it. It's a Nouveau dr crystal drop in the color Simply White. There you go. Okay, but since this is dark, I'm going to put some Simply White do dots on it. Can you see? Yep, okay. And what is our movement? Down, down, up, down, up. Oh yeah, it's getting old. Down, up. I think the stuff gets thicker as, as it gets older. Down, up, 
Okay, there we go. So we have some, oh, those are cute, right? Almost looks like buttons on a shirt or something like that. A um, lot of things you could do with that. Okay, so let's put you over here to dry and let's grab another one and we'll do another one of these little purple guys, but we'll do something different with them. So this is just kind of fun little goofy things. And, and then as some of those are drying, we'll decorate the others. How about that? Just some random ideas, just things you can play with. Okay, oh, I just got another idea. Okay, um, uh, let's stay focused, Pam. You're gonna be running around with different ideas in your head. It's gonna, gonna muck up the entire video. Okay, you're right, stay focused, stay focused. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, we have a, this is one of the longer ones. We're doing the same maneuver with the, uh, the wider or the chubbier um, fabric thickness strip. So we have that wrap. Oh, that was like two seconds, right? Anybody can do that very quick. But now we have options of like, what else could we do with this? Well, um, like a, a million and one things. Like you could come along and you could wrap it with a different fabric right on top and keep going. Now I'm covered in everything. Okay, let me back up a little. Oh, back up. Boop, there we are. And then, um, oh, come on. Hang on. Okay, I went over into my trim drawer and I just pulled out some little pieces of trim. I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in on you for you. Okay, and um, I came up with, I have this little daisy chain thing. And I thought, well, maybe let's just cut off one of those little daisies. Yeah. And we can just glue him on there and that would look really cute just by himself, right? Very innocent. And um, so let's just go ahead and do that. I think we can probably glue stick this on or you could fabric fix it if you really want to be secure, secure. But I think, I think that's okay. There, all right, glue stick that on. Isn't that cute? Oh, look how cute that it is. So cute. Okay, and then what, uh, okay, one more example. Do we have one more, oh, we do, we have one more little piece. So let's go ahead and use it up since we're here and we're not trying to create more scraps, right? No, we're trying to use up our scraps, right? <laughs> There's the theory. Okay, so let me get another big one. This one has a cling on. I'll deal with you later. Got another big one. Using our thumb technique. Here we go. Thumb technique in action. There we go. And now we're just gonna plop that on there, fold it over and then do the wrap around there. And that pretty much completes that little base project. But this time, this time I thought maybe we would uh, wrap it with some eyelash trim. Hey, let's try that. Okay, I just cut a piece off. This stuff gets everywhere, doesn't it? It's got like, especially when you have gluey fingers. Playing with eyelash trim and gluey fingers is almost like cruelty. <laughs> Crafter cruelty. Oh, could you? Oh, I know you've got gluey fingers, but would you mind handing me the eyelash trim? Go away. Go away. I don't want to know you. <laughs> okay, maybe. I don't know how much I can. Okay, I guess you could do as much as you want on here. All right, so I did a little. I uh, did that. I, you, know, you didn't see that. Okay, let me show you again. I don't think you saw it. I'm, I'm still stuck in the fibers here. Help. Help. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Did I leave enough to tie it? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, let's just try it again. Okay, you need a little more. More of a tail. You can never, and this stuff is hard to tie upon itself because you're never sure if you're pulling on the actual tail or you've just got fibers, you know, and you're just like, am I fiber random here right now? Is that what's going on? It's just like fibers everywhere. Okay, where's the one end? See, I lost it already. Who brought the eyelash trim in the picture. Let's get rid of that completely. <laughs> there are many other things that you can do that bring uh, peace and harmony into your world. Eyelash trim is not one of them, but you know, okay, let's not give up on the eyelash trim because because there's always a way, right? Okay, so instead of that, let's take this guy and let's add the eyelash trim to his bottom. Yes, that might be fun because then he's going to have an eyelash trim dangle and we're all about that. Totally. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go in there. Don't give me any, any hassles today. No hassles. <laughs> Why do I keep playing with eyelash trim? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to pull it through. Oh, oh, I lost one. All right. Oh, we're going to start over. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the way it goes. Yep. Okay, here we go. Here he is. All right, the eyelash trim of it all. Maybe we don't need all that, but we can just do this. Let me roll it a little bit. Maybe let it control it as I'm 
putting it through. I'm sure there's some kind of needle I could use, but I just don't want to get it. I'm lazy. Today's lazy sitting small stuff day. Yep, don't want to move. Just, oh, look, I took off my, my great decor. I can put it back on. <laughs> there. Now we have harnessed the power of the eyelash trim. Yes. Yes. And now we can put this back on here like it belongs. How cute is that, huh? Is that a little long maybe? Maybe. Okay, we'll trim it a little. Okay, there. Oof, yes. Oh, very pretty. Very pretty. Look how cute that is. Right? And... um. Uh, so let's let's have some fun decorating some of these. Okay, so that we, that was stage one. We put a little tassely thing on it. Worked out very well, I think. I like that a lot. And uh, okay, so we'll put you in the done pile. Oh, look, we have a, we have mayhem going on over here. Can you see this? Paperclip is wanting to land in the nouveau drops. No, come off. Oh yes. Okay, look over there. Do not combine with the other one. Nope, stay there. Okay. All right, this guy. I did him a little while ago, but we're going to put him in the drying area too, because you know how it goes around here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and decorate some of these other little fluffers. Okay, um, this guy I think is really pretty. Let's, put, let's do some stuff with him. All right, so actually what you could do, which would be really smart. All right, let's start from the beginning on this one, because I'm going to do the same thing with that paper, but this time we'll be smart about it. I'm going to put my jump ring on before I wrap it up. That way I can bypass having to open and close the jump ring with these pliers. And if you don't have these pliers, then ah, that's awesome because you won't need them because you're just going to be putting the jump ring directly on the paper clip. There we go. I have placed it now directly on the paper clip. And uh, you know, so that's how it goes. But if you want to put something on there, you might have to still put something on there. You know what I mean? So um, let's say you want to put a little charm, something like that. Okay, pull it off for a second, Pam. Go get a charm. Okay, I got a pile of whatnot charms. I don't even know what I grabbed. I just grabbed, like, who doesn't love a spoon, right? Who doesn't love a spoon? Um, I almost put it in the drying things. Yep, okay, put it here. And then I also got some paper beads that we made before, and I'll put the link down below. And um, some of these little... Um, crafty gear things, which I think would look really cute. Okay, let's get all set, seated and nestled. Well, you know, I think this, the easiest thing to do would be skip the jump ring and just hang that. But if you want it to hang so it hangs flat, the jump ring is necessary. So go back out. Yeah, retreat and take away everything I just said. And go maybe get a bigger jump ring because you don't be fussing with these things. Okay, if you get a big jump ring, some of these jump rings are really easy to open, like finger open. You don't need the um, uh, the tool. Okay, let me show you. There's an, always an opening, and there it is. I'm going to use my brute strength right here. Watch this. Watch this. Eh, there, I opened it. Now, you just want to open it like that. You don't want to pull apart the ring. You just want to open it like that. Okay, so now I can go, ah, oh, yes. And now I can go... Ah, yes, and now I bring them back together, okay? And I go a little past. So I take this, can you see it? This arm, and I take it that way, just a little past where this guy is, because his spring action, metal pulling um, properties will pull him back just like a little, like 16th of an inch, so a little further past, and then he just bounces back right into place of perfection, okay? So it's like open, then you go pull it past and, and he bounces. Okay, I helped him there a little bit. But uh, that's what it looks like. I need stronger glasses. <laughs> Somebody get me a pair of stronger glasses. <laughs> oh, I got them. Never mind. Don't worry. You don't have to get up. No, no, I got it. Here we go. Okay. Oh, hello, everybody. Now I can see you. All right, so now we have a dangle. We got a dangle. This is a big dangle, but we got a dangle. Isn't that cute? That's so cute, isn't it? You could even uh, put this, let, let's say you have a sash that goes around a journal, like wraps the journal closed, and you could put one of these on the end of the sash as a little ornament, um, or even something to tuck uh, to help um, uh, anchor the sash, give it a little weight, a little bobble weight there. So yes, yes, these have multiple possibilities in junk journal world. Okay, so we did that one. So let's see what else we can do. Um, uh, oh, uh, yes. Um, okay, so let's take piece. Okay, 
The piece is very innocent and very subtle. And I'm going to take a, uh, maybe a smaller one, smaller jump ring, and I'll fight with this one a little so you can see the fight in action and where it takes us. Now let's see, can I open these with my, my brute strength? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, so you don't really need the plier, but if you're fussing or it's hard to see or they slip out of your hands, which they can sometimes do, um, sometimes a plier is very helpful, especially with these small ones. Okay, so now I'm just going to place this right on here, right on the little ringaroo. Yeah, and then I'm going to put piece on there. Whoop, it's so darn small. Um, okay, piece, get on there. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to put it back. I don't, I'm going to try with my fingers first. You can't do it. You might break a nail. You might, it could happen. Now let's see if you have a little gap space. See the gap space there? Yeah, you don't want that. That's going to, stuff's going to fall out. You come out, you see if it, they lined up. If they're pretty lined up, that's good. But then you might have to give a, the, what I call the subtle squeeze, the subtle squeeze. Don't give it a huge squeeze or it's going to pop past itself. Subtle squeeze. Yeah, there we go. And now... We have peace with a fish. Yeah, how awesome is that, right? And let's say you want to hang this onto something easily with a lot of fussy foo-foo. Um, just grab a gourd pin or a bulb pin or um, a garment pin. These have things have a million names. Um, but then you can come along and just pop this one of these babies in here and just hook it on to whatever you're like, like say, okay, I've got um, a page tab. And it's sticking out, and so you just pop it on there and close it. And it can be um, a fabric page tab. It could be a uh, paper page tab. But you can use these to uh, put any of those in there. Um, so that's kind of a fun thing to do in your junk journals. So I call this part of junk journal jewelry. And there's a lot of fun things that you can do with junk journal jewelry. And uh, okay, so let's see what we made. Let's just review. I think I went all over the place. Yes. But what we did get to show you, okay, where's my, my frame is here, is just number one, okay, basic washi tape wrapped, guys, very easy, very simple, um, uses basic supplies. Then we elevated it up to using old book page and stamping, very fun, okay, and uh, here's just old book page, okay, and then here's old book page inked and stamped next to it there get that little guy out of there and then oh don't touch it Pam we went up to fabric and we stamped and added stickles yes that's what we did okay so then we weighed some bigger ones like we made our I'm out of order I'm out of order <laughs> it's okay it's okay Pam uh, here's a fabric one with Nouveau drops. Here's a paper one with ink and stickles. Yeah, it's almost like surgery here. Okay, I'll get you in there. Get you in there. And uh, let's just tilt that down. That's easier. Okay. And here is a, um, this is also stickles paper. This is a copy paper and a pen, a marker pen. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, Oh, uh, we have these little guys, these little writing word guys, very fun, on regular copy paper um, and inked. And then we went up a level and we added a gourd pin, uh, metal charm, and word and ink. And then we have old book page with gear charm. And where's the one with the little, I had one with a flower on it, didn't I? Where's that one? It was really cute. It had a little tail. Oh, there it is. Over there. Yeah. Oh, it's way over there. <laughs> way over there. Okay, here's the one with the little eyelash tail. Yeah, there you go, eyelash tail. Your moment of glory. Hmm, can't see you. There you go. Your moment of glory. Um, so there you go. I hope you had fun with this little idea. It was a lot of fun. There's a lot of easy ways to attach. Um, you can use string. Also, just to attach them to something, just run, like that's a loop for you. It's already there um, and you don't have to turn it um, the way you do with the jump rings because string will accommodate uh, laying flat for you, which is nice. Uh, and uh, 
You can use these, like I said, on your spine dangles or on your closures or on uh, page tabs or any lace or trim or anything like that, any cloth. And you can actually pierce paper uh, with the gourd pins if you want to use a gourd pin to hang it um, as well. So that might give you some ideas. So I hope you had fun there and everything's dandy. And let me see if I can get somebody to say hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. I would like to say hello. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mom, for taking the cone off. The cone is off. The cone is off. Okay. Would you, are you ready to, let's see. Okay. I'm coming in. Coming in like I got floating through space. Oh, it's a little bright. I think that's what it is. Why is my face so big, Mom? Mom? Mom, can you make my face smaller? Okay. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> All right. I'll try again. <laughs> okay. Here I am. Coming in through. It's like I'm in orbit. Hello, everybody. I am feeling much better. I'm in a sleepy mode right now, but that's okay because I'm healing. Uh, but I am having bursts of energy. Yes, I'm going to be like a contemplative monk now. I have bursts of energy periodically throughout the day. I am going for walks and everything is functioning as it should. I am eating well, probably more than I should. And life is good and I have the most wonderful toys. Yeah, it's really great. That it's like, like it's, it's like Christmas. Yeah. Okay, so everybody, go have some fun out there, and I'm going to go back to healing. I'll see ya. Bye. I'm floating out of the orbit now. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> all right, back over there. Put your cone on. Yeah, sure, Mom. I'm all about the cone. You know me. Me and the cone. Okay, everybody. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I hope you had fun here. I hope uh, you got some ideas. Maybe you want to play with the little things today, and don't forget your goggles, because you'll need them. And... Uh, um, so for everybody who is new, welcome and thank you for everybody who has been here. We are getting really close to 90,000. 90, Isn't that crazy? That's my, oh my gosh, you guys are, you guys are, you guys totally rock. Um, I am beside myself. Also, um, if you are new and you don't know that my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, my podcasts, which are new material, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're free to listen to on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or about seven or eight other platforms I can never remember. Or you can just click the link down below or go to anchor.fm and you'll find me there or just google the paper outpost podcast on google and you will also find me there and just click and there's over three years worth of um a podcast to listen to all related to uh junk journals paper crafting life of a crafter answering crafter questions and what else can we say we can also say that uh oh i have a free monthly emailed newsletter make sure you sign up for that you're going to get a free digital image email emailed to you personally every month and you can print that out and use it any way you like you just have fun with it um and uh what else um, oh, you're going to get a, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use a junk journal. And you can, I, I use that to tuck into the front of my junk journals to kind of give people some guidance if they've never seen one for the recipient. And also a um, checklist of supplies. If you're just early and you're gathering things and you don't know, like, gosh, what should I even gather as I'm out there in the world for, to make junk journals? Well, have I got a list for you? It's about seven or eight pages long, and I could probably add another seven or eight pages of ideas to it away um, <laughs> but that's a really helpful resource and uh, we, I give you junk journal tips and updates from me at the paper outpost so um, also you get to see the uh, latest and greatest monthly um, uh, new digi kits that are coming out and the digi kits are sold in my Etsy shop and they are printable downloads that you can print out at home and then use these really beautiful images in your uh, junk journals they make very easy pockets and tucks and flips and things like that they're just just really fun to make they can get you started too like if you're like I don't know what to do or where to begin this is a great place to begin also they um, don't take up any room and um, they're easy to find and they're uh, themed, they're, they're uh, in collection. So you get five pages of uh, JPEG images and uh, there you go, you can have a lot of fun with them. And what else? Um, I also have a print and mail service, which uh, um, if you give me the name of 10 DigiKits that you want and you buy the print and mail service for my DigiKits on my Etsy shop, then I will print them and mail them to you so that you can cut them out at home. You don't have to have a printer, you don't have to run to Office Depot or, any, or ask your brother or your sister Sally or anything like that. I will print and mail them to you. So that does help. Um, I've had a lot of people really like that service. So um, if that's something that's of interest, let me know. If you have any questions or you're confused at all how it works, just let me know. I'm trying to make it easier and easier for you guys. And I think I have a way that's coming up that's gonna make it even easier. So um, hang on to your hats for that. And what else, what else? Um, okay, what else? Um, okay, I am adding, um, there's something that Etsy has. It's an offer of a website. 
And it's integrated with Etsy. So it's actually, it's like Etsy w would like us to use this website. And um, a lot of people, when they go onto Etsy, because of the way Etsy is designed, it's designed to show you what you're looking for from the person you're looking for it from, but it's also going to show you many things from other people. And what happens is sometimes inadvertently somebody buys something when they think they're buying it from me, but they end up buying it from somebody else because they didn't understand the way Etsy presents stuff to you. And it's, it's hard to understand. Honestly, I've, like if I just wandered in there, I would have thought the exact same thing. And uh, so if um, they've come up with this idea called a web, like called a website, it's a website where when you punch in www.thepaperoutpost.com, you're going to go to this website. It's actually my Etsy store. The payments are the same. The prices are the same. Everything is the same, but it's just my stuff. You're not going to be looking at anybody else's stuff. So if that makes you feel more comfortable, definitely go to www.thepaperoutpost.com and you'll only see my stuff. Um, I've got some other links so you can look at different specific things on um, in my Etsy shop down below. But if you just want to see what's available, everything in there, that is a place to check out. So you can go ahead and check that out. I'm just kind of feeling my way through that and making sure it's good and functioning. And uh, so far, everything seems to be working just fine, but um, uh, it is new. So it's kind of a testing thing. Um, so uh, it is functional. Um, okay, what else? Oh, I thought I, else I wanted to tell you. Okay, tell you about the print and mail. There's a, there is a change coming to it. And oh, okay, a quick update on the print and mail service. Um, over the weekend, just poof out of the blue, or I wasn't paying attention, but um, shipping rates went up um, through USPS and Etsy and everything. So my, ship, uh, my uh, rates had to be adjusted a little bit, but I'm coming up with a way where I can give you an extra plus benefit that might override that. So I'm just working on that right now, but that is coming. So that's going to um, uh, affect, I guess, the print and mails exactly. Um, so we'll see how that goes and I will keep you posted on that. But uh, so far they are functioning. You can still buy them right now and um, um, you will be able to continue to buy them, but I might have, it might just present itself a little bit differently. The price, the price will still be what it is, but it, uh, uh, it has to take into account the new shipping price. So just so you know that. And uh, what else? Um, I think that's everything. Is that everything? No, I'm missing something. Amazon store. I have an Amazon store where I put all my favorite tools and supplies. So if you're looking for little different items that you might or you might not have, um, that's a great place to start. And uh, you can always use that as a little launching pad to go look for other things. So if you're just trying, like, what was that that you used? Oh, stickles? What's a stickle? Okay, that's going to give you more information on what a stickle is uh, or a, a little a bottle of stickles. And uh, so you might have some fun with that. So I think that's pretty much it, everybody. So I hope you had fun here. I hope you um, uh, get your game on and play with some little things. And happy crafting, everyone. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.